Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. Wanted to uh, welcome you back to my shop. The second video I made of the day, the first one was about Warp. Warp 9. That kid on Star Wars with the weird forehead. What happens to metal when you weld it? Um, I thought we'd start outside. It was a beautiful... What is this? March or July? I'm not sure what this is, but it was just a gorgeous uh, day today. So I thought we'd start outside. And pick up on the Jeep from a uh, angle that we don't normally get to see too much. But today was all about battery boxes, uh, specifically the box in the back where the tank was. I got it pretty much done, and the only thing I need to do is uh, put the side panels on. They're just held on by screws. Uh, I got all the welding done. I got all the mounts done. All the mounts on the chassis, all the mounts in the boxes, the bolt to the mounts on the chassis. I was able to use the four five sixteenths um, captive nuts that the Jeep originally had that held the fuel tank in. So that's that's always nice to be able to use original equipment, original mounting locations. So let's uh, get a little bit down low and see what what we got going on here. You can see there it is. It tucked up there pretty nice. I'm not sure how you figure out what approach and departure angles are, but I'm pretty sure I didn't really mess with that too much. But to be honest, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of hardcore four-wheeling with this. Uh, let's go underneath and take a better look, see what we've done. So, like I said, those are the four five-sixteenths. Mounting points the Jeep used originally for the back of the fuel tank, and then those are the little the little spacers that are going to hold the batteries nice and tight. This is the side that's going to have the battery terminals on it. Uh, yeah, it was just basically a you know I had to pick one which side goes on which side, and I I kind of picked this side because up in the bed where all these terminals are going to be going. I want to I want to run the I want to run as much stuff inside the Jeep as I can uh, just to keep it out of the elements um on the Ranger everything lasted pretty good, everything survived well. But there was some corrosion and I don't know. Connections are always problematic and when you throw in the complications of weather and salt and mud and and gook it just makes things worse so I want to try and keep everything inside as much as possible and then let's go up underneath here I got so much stuff on the floor I can't roll around very easily all right there we go so those are the three top mounts that hole was actually there also the one in the middle I was hoping I could put the original uh, fuel tank guard around this just to kind of you know make it even more difficult to tell that there's anything uh, not original about this but it doesn't fit so I'm not going to do that but yeah so there's that um yeah I don't know the one thing I learned doing this side when I was welding these brackets to the tank um I was really foolish in that I didn't uh, secure all the bolts down and make everything tight and use clamps and um, you know what happened was whenever you weld metal it just warps if it if it has the, the ability to move it's going to and it did um, so one of the things you kind of pick up uh, on your path of fabrication skills is that it's not so much about what you can fabricate as it is about uh, how well you can fix screw-ups when they happen and they do happen if you watch any fabrication channel on youtube uh, those grind hard plumbing guys they do some fabulous work uh, they kind of skip all the parts when they screw up but rest assured that they do screw up um, and that kid that is the main fabricator he fixes it because um, he's he's really good and then uh, the guy on one of my favorite web channels for uh, tig welding is 6061 Mm. and he's just an 
out of this world TIG welder, but he shows a lot of uh, fabrication um, tip, uh, techniques, um, you know, and he's learned those over the years of screwing up and getting things right. Uh, the first time is obviously better than redoing it the second time, but you do have to do that sometimes. Uh, one problem that I did kind of run into, and I can't do anything about it, is um, you always want to keep ease of maintenance in mind, and I don't know if I'll be able to unget take that shock out without having to lower this whole dang battery box. I might be able to because those are slotted, a little bar that goes through the red bushing up there, it's slotted, so I'm able to be able to take that bolt out that's sort of on the outboard side on the left as we're looking at it. Maybe I'll take that bolt out, loosen the one that's kind of mm, covered, um, and then slide the shock out to the left as we're looking at it. I don't know. Uh, I don't really plan on changing these shocks out anytime soon, but it is something to consider when you're doing this stuff. Um, what else? I don't know. Overall, pretty good, successful day. Like I said, I still got to sort of uh, mount those, um, that panel, the panels on either side, but they just, they're just going to get some screws, some quarter 20 screws to hold those on, and they can, uh, that can be like the last thing that I do. It doesn't really matter. But I think that just about takes care of.